Chapter 471, Poor Kid Based on its appearance, the dojo was of respectable antiquity and an epitome of traditional Japanese architecture. Further down the yard was an empty hall that resembled the training place for martial arts. Its floor and door frame were both made of wood. Inside, old-type armor and wooden swords were piled up beside the wall. Lu Shu walked straight inside. Is the inherited trade complete? Yes, though it is simpler than that of China and the conservatives, because it focuses more on the so-called will instead of fighting effectiveness. That is also why it is disadvantaged in actual combat, the maid Tanaguchi Bundai said. Actually, Tanaguchi Bundai was Chinese. Nonetheless, she had spent years in Japan as a spy. For decades, the Chinese and the Japanese had been engaged in a mutual infiltration process. Tanaguchi Bundai led Lu Shu to his bedroom. The yard was floored with uncomplicated cyan pebbles, through which ran a path lined with fine bamboo. The leaves rustled, sending every breeze away. Outside the bedroom door was a wooden corridor, under which rested a small stove. A black iron teapot sat on the stove with grace and exquisiteness. Lu Shu suddenly asked, Do you miss home? Tanaguchi had already begun seeing Lu Shu as Kirihara Yusuk due to her professionalism, and also because of the shock she felt when Lu Shu suddenly changed into Kirihara's appearance upon entering the yard. She had no cultivation background. Please rest early today. The Japanese lessons will commence tomorrow. Before you fully master the language, may I request you do not speak in front of your classmates? Actually, you don't have to worry because Kirihara Yusuk was an invisible nobody in school. His body has been disposed of and there is nothing worthy of your concern, Tanaguchi Bundai said. She seemed to have been completely localized and her personality was equally polite as other Japanese people. In fact, Lu Xu's mind was filled with displeasure at Nye Ting and he was the least bit interested in what Tanaguchi had just said. In the bedroom, he saw a set of uniform that looked like the Chinese tunic suit. Inside the closet hung Kirihara Yusuk's used clothes. As for undergarments, Tanaguchi Bundai had prepared new ones for him. At this moment, Lu Shu heard a swoosh of wind outside his yard. Then, a black figure leaped into their house. Tanaguchi Bundai was immediately alerted. She did not expect anyone to come for them so early. Now, Lu Shu had just arrived so the visitor was probably under the conservatives. Lu Shu was one of the strongest in the heavenly network, only second to the heavenly kings in certain aspects. Thus, all information of him, including his level of capabilities, strengths and personality, was restricted to Tanaguchi. All that she knew about him was his original appearance. It was not because of Nye Ting's distrust, but that there was no need for so many details. That was how the confidentiality system worked and Tanaguchi Bundai had no issue with it. Now, she only hoped that Lu Shu was able to face the sudden crisis with his supposedly non-changing cowardliness. In her speculation, the best use of Kurihara Yusuk's identity was to cause trouble for the jingoists with the help from the conservatives. Yet, before the person could even land on the ground, Lu Shu kicked him out at once. In the meantime, Tanaguchi Bundai could only gasp in shock as the black figure was tossed over the wall like a garbage bag and fainted outside the yard. He did not even get the chance to speak. From Li Wenjing's distress, plus 666. From Matsuura Harekuro's distress, plus 999. Li Wenjing was Tanaguchi Bundai's Chinese name and this Matsuura Harekuro was just a poor kid. In a rage, Lu Xu asked softly, why are they so fond of breaking into other people's houses? Can't they at least walk in from the front door? So annoying. He was almost losing his temper, after being tricked about the inheritance matter and strangers jumping in and out of his yard. His reaction would not result in much suspicion, though, since Kurihara Yusuk was believed to be strong. Besides this, Lu Xu could not be bothered anymore. Didn't Nye Ting want him to play to the score? Anyway, he was not forbidden from beating people up. Under the suppression of the jingoists, those rats would not dare to cause him any harm. 
Taniguchi took a long moment to gather her bearings. I think they feel that walking in from the front door is unsafe, because some people are currently wanted by the jingoists. Then why are they still coming here? What if they get me into trouble? Lu Shu was unhappy. I'm not a scapegoat. Cautiously Taniguchi flew her kite. Could I confirm that your mission is to rope in the conservatives? Lu Shu gave her a casual wave. It was, but not anymore. Nia Ting had promised to give him Kurihara Yusuk's inherited properties, but it turned out nothing but a lie and he still had to pay using his own wallet during his stay in Japan. Lu Shu felt that he had to calm himself down before he could give it careful consideration about his future plans. But he couldn't. On a bright note, the environment was conducive for cultivation, given its unique aesthetics against a backdrop of peace and simplicity. Perhaps it was high time to resume the practice of his celestial map and swordplay after such a long pause. Although the opening of his Sea of Chi seemed improbable at the moment due to the presence of the snow mountain, he saw the glint of hope of slashing the mountain. Later that night, the poor kid Matsuura Harekuro slowly regained his consciousness outside the yard. When he recalled what had just happened. From Matsuura Harekuro's distress, plus 666. By moonlight, he hurried to a remote abode in another corner of the city. No sooner had he entered than he knelt down on his limbs in front of an old man, who was playing chess with a young lady across a go chessboard. Both of them were dressed in kimonos and the girl was kneeling on her knees. In fact, few people would wear a kimono nowadays outside festive seasons. The elder asked as he carried on with his match, how was it? And why are you back so late? I was. I was kicked by Kirihara Yusuke and fainted on the spot. He is strong indeed, at least much more powerful than me, Matsuura lowered his head in shame. As expected. But how did he have the courage to attack you? The girl asked calmly. The elder smiled. His parents' sudden death could probably have had a profound impact on his temperament, given his innate abilities. Isn't this what we want? A pure puppet would have been so boring. Then what should we do, master? The girl put down her chess piece and asked. Go approach him, Yeko. The mind of an adolescent boy who has just experienced a huge twist in disposition is easily swayed. Yes, master. Chapter 472 The Conservatives and the Jingoists Early in the morning, Lu Xu got up from his tatame with a stretch. He spent the night before learning by rote a huge pile of materials given by Taniguchi Bundai about important figures, in the collection of gods and the remaining forces of the conservatives. Now, he had had a more comprehensive understanding about the tragic plight the conservatives were in. According to the information from the Heavenly Network, as Kirihara's maid, Taniguchi's knowledge on the conservatives was comparatively detailed and dependable. In contrast to a total of over 10,000 jingoists, the conservatives only had slightly more than 100 under its lead. In the past, Lu Xu had expected better, given the fact that the conservatives still had the courage to fight with the jingoists, openly and in secret. Judging from now, it seemed like a downright joke. Of course, another reason for their feeble yet sustaining existence was the missing high-end class B fighter that belonged to them. He was their strongest card, but Lu Xu could not be any less interested in a collaboration with them. After washing up, Lu Xu stood in the yard. The simple wooden design and the pebble path made him feel clean and fresh. The care that the previous owner of the yard had put into it was apparent in every detail. In the past, Lu Xu found it difficult to understand how the white paper pasted on traditional Japanese wooden frames could be maintained clean. Now he noticed that everything, at least in this yard, was totally unblemished. Taniguchi Bundai walked out from another room. She made a gentle bow to Lu Xu and said, Your breakfast is ready. However, I made Japanese dishes because I am unfamiliar with Chinese-style food. Please let me know if it does not suit your taste. Moreover, I have prepared your lunch bento. So do remember to bring it with you. Honestly speaking, it was Lu Xu's first time to be served and it felt kind of weird. 
Only the night before, Taniguchi had asked him about the lunch box. Lu Shu wanted to cook it himself, but then he realized a problem. It was not his laziness, but that he did not know how to cook Japanese food. That would result in the following situation. During lunchtime, other people opened their lunchbox to see onajirai or unadon. But for Lu Shu, there would be shredded pork with garlic sauce, sour and hot potato shreds and chicken cubes with peanuts. Nonsense. His identity would surely be exposed on his first day as an undercover agent. Tanaguchi Bundai sat straight at his side, her hands resting gently on her knees. Out of curiosity, Lu Shu asked, how long have you been here? 21 years. I followed my father here when I was nine and I have never left since then. I did not know my true identity until seven years ago, Tanaguchi replied warmly. Her good-natured smile reminded Lu Shu of the legendary Yamato Nadashiko, one, a Japanese term meaning the personification of an idealized Japanese woman. She seemed even more conservative than most Japanese females nowadays. Truth be told, she could not be considered pretty and wrinkles had long since crept onto the corner of her eyes. Undeniably, though, she was indeed a demure and composed lady. Lu Xu asked after some hesitation, you didn't answer my question yesterday. Do you miss home? I did, she smiled. But my friends are all here and I have no family in China. Now, the only thing that gives me the motivation to live is my father's last wish. A few years ago, I would secretly sing our national anthem when I was alone in my room. It might even move me to tears. But, I no longer do that in recent years. I have become used to here. Heavenly King Ye once asked me whether I was willing to go back and live a normal life, but I feel that my current life is normal enough. This is the life I know. All of a sudden, Lu Xu's heart was filled with awe. This world has never known true peace, and many were born with a certain fate to uphold the order of the world so that the majority can live in tranquility. Thus, people like Tanaguchi Bundai deserved Lu Xu's respect, though he knew he could never do the same. After breakfast, Lu Xu changed into Kirihara Yusuke's uniform and went to school with his school bag. The education system in Japan was very much different from that in China. Usually school started at 8.30 a.m. and ended as early as 3.30 p.m., followed by co-curricular activities after school. A heavy emphasis was placed on holistic development. But that did not translate into an easy curriculum. Many students had to attend external tuition classes so as to secure a place in a good university due to the stressful academic competition. But Lu Xu did not have to worry about that. In any case, he was not here for university and extra lessons would only be an additional burden. Admittedly, streets in Japan were free from dirt. As Lu Xu walked, girls in short skirt uniforms went past him occasionally. Their cheerful laughter often drew Lu Xu's eyes to their legs. Although there was no direct link between cheerful laughter and legs, Lu Xu did not really care. In Nishinokyo, walls closer to the streets were relatively short. Thus, Lu Xu overheard two boys jubilantly discussing about a swordplay club. Speaking of which, the swordplay club of Baika High School was going to have a competition with Shioj Girls High School, which had consecutively won over a few swordplay masters from other high schools recently. Lu Xu listened for a long while before realizing that this match was free of practitioners. These students were unable to become practitioners due to their lack of cultivation aptitude. Yet, the onset of the cultivation era had brought with it renewed popularity of martial arts. In the past, the main themes of Japanese campus festivals had been centered around spectator activities such as art exhibitions, mock trials, concerts, blood donation corners, various model stalls, pharmaceutical or botanic workshops and auctions. At current times, however, student interest had shifted towards martial arts. In fact, on average as many as 60% of the entire boy population of a school were involved in its swordplay club, which was very impressive. Talented swordsmen and swordswomen were like school celebrities, since those with cultivation aptitude had already been recruited by the collection of gods. 
but to Lu Xu, practitioners and commoners belonged to different worlds. So such news was irrelevant to him. According to the information given, Karihara Yusuk was awfully quiet. He would not even attend music and physical education lessons, let alone co-curricular activities. In Japan, music and PE lessons would never be taken away by other subject teachers. Furthermore, students had special sports attires for PE and designated rooms for music classes. How could this be possible in a normal high school in China? Before the start of the PE lesson, your form teacher would walk in first with a stack of scripts. As for music's lessons, ha! they did not even exist in Chinese high schools. In grade 12, if you told your form teacher that you wanted to play basketball during your PE lesson, your teacher would reply, that's a load of balls. Chapter 473, Inconsistent Character Lu Xu froze a little when he entered the class. In his impression, classrooms should be packed fully with students until no more space was available for extra seats. But in Japan, there were only around 30 students per class and students would be streamed into different classes every year. It was euphemistically called to train students' social skills. It seemed that those students had already been accustomed to ignoring Kirihara Yusuke's presence. No one greeted him as he entered the room. When Lu Xu walked past a boy's table, he even teased him by pasting a sticker on Lu Xu's bag. Lu Xu raised his brows in slight annoyance but did not react. Although he lost his temper the night before, the conservatives would probably not leak the incident as they pleased. Therefore, Lu Xu could still maintain his current persona as a coward. After all, he was an undercover agent now and not he himself. Without uttering a word, Lu Xu walked straight to his seat, which Tanaguchi Bundai had thoughtfully marked out for him. In the meantime, some of the students were discussing about the upcoming sword play match between their school and Shioj Girls High School. It was said that one of their opponents, Sakurai Yeko, was a tough rival. Suddenly, he felt the sticker on his bag was gently peeled off. Surprised, Lu Xu looked back, and he saw a girl leaning towards him from her seat with the sticker between her fingers. The girl glared at the boy in the front row. Noguchi Yuki, you've gone too far. The boys shrugged their shoulders in disapproval. Mind your own business, Chiba. You've helped him for two years. As long as he and I are classmates, I will always help him, the girl named Chiba replied. Lu Xu pondered, what a strange feeling. It seemed that this girl had been Kirihara's classmate for two years, despite the class reshuffling and she had always been protecting him. But Lu Xu could not resonate with his new identity at all. He did not feel a tad grateful even when Chiba upheld justice for him. Their classroom was located on the first floor. Supporting his chin on his hands, Lu Xu gazed out of the window. Nishinokyo was gorgeous in autumn. Every now and then there were yellow leaves falling to the floor, then swept away by students on duty. Chiba came up to Lu Xu. Kiri Harikin 1. Kuin is a component of Japanese honorific speech, I heard that you fell sick. Are you feeling better now? Lu Xu was stunned. Then, he replied in Japanese, oh, yes. Much better. Thank you. Then, he turned to the window again. And then, he fell asleep. Suddenly the bell woke him up. A spitball hit Lu Xu's head. He wiped his face and looked up, just in time to see a few boys giggling at him. As he looked down, a spitball had just stopped rolling on the floor. Forget it. Stick to his image. Lu Xu went back to sleep again. Now, he had no slight interest in learning since his attendance at examinations was completely unnecessary. Honestly speaking, Lu Xu was very pragmatic. He had not become a miser for his passion for studies, but because of the fact that he was well aware that good academic results were the fastest way to success and social resources. His goal was never the ranking in school, but his own future. Chiba eyed Lu Xu as he bent over his table. Strangely she felt that he had changed, but could not tell why. Beside her, a girl tidied her hair in her mirror. 
Then, she said to Chiba, don't tell me you've fallen for Kirihara. No, Chiba shook her head at once, not at all. As classmates, we should care for him, as his parents have just passed away. Just when she finished her words, another spitball hit Lu Xu's head. Lu Xu clenched his fist at once. But he had to correspond with his current image. Finally it was lunch break and students took out their bento one by one for lunch. At this time, a few boys walked towards Lu Xu, bending their arms over one another's shoulders. They threw their uniform over their shoulders, thinking that it was cool. One of them gave a pat to Lu Xu and demanded, eh, Kirihara. Be a good classmate and share your bento with us. Lu Xu shot him a look. Before he could respond, a person had already stolen his lunchbox from under his table. Once the box was opened, a boy let out a dramatic scream. Wah, lucky you. Your bento is still so nicely made even though your parents are dead. The boy grabbed an onajirai and broke it open. Inside, orange salmon rows were round like pearls, glittering and translucent. Apparently Tanaguchi had put an effort in preparing his meal. Hey! How about put the onajirai back? Lu Xu said calmly. I, I must be consistent with my persona, Lu Xu told himself. The bullies exchanged a startled look. Then, they burst into laughter. <laughs> Did you hear that? Kirihara rejected us today. Impressive. Eh, Kirihara, will you punch us? Touching his forehead, Lu Xu slowly unbuttoned the first button near his collar. Then, in his classmates' astounded stares, Kirihara Yusuk stood up and threw a punch into the boy in front of him, quick as the lightning. But it was not the end yet. Then, like a movie scene, Kirihara Yusuk banged his fists with impressive crispness, putting the seven boys groaning on the floor. At that instant, everything seemed to have stopped in a freeze frame. Flipped tables, flying textbooks, and students dropped jaws. A ray of afternoon sunlight shone in from outside, providing natural lighting for the fight, which was started by the nobody, Kirihara Yusuk. Then, the light was shattered into pieces by Yusuk's agile figure. The classroom walls were set aglow beautifully with the moving rays. After merely five minutes, Lu Xu returned to his table with his chopsticks, picking and choosing from seven bentos. He pointed at a yellow lunchbox and asked, Whose is this? Mine, a tiny built boy squatting right in front of Lu Xu raised his hand carefully. Too salty. Add less salt tomorrow, Lu Xu curled his lips. From Noguchi Yuki's distress, plus 666. Whose stainless steel box is this? What a shame. How poor are you? From. Then, Lu Xu looked out of the window, distress all over his face. Hell, he had successfully destroyed his public image. Mia Ting must have seen this coming, but definitely not so fast. Chapter 474, Sakurai Yeko In fact, be it the conservatives or the jingoists, political factions like these were way too distant from those ordinary high school students. They had no idea about the cause of Yusuk's parents' death, and neither did they know about his cultivation background. Earlier, Kirihara Yusuk's blood sample was collected by Tanaguchi Bundai and sent to China via special channels. Then, an analysis of the sample conducted by the Heavenly Network soon revealed Yusuk's true powers. But none of that mattered. The key thing was that Lu Xu had used violence. All of his classmates found it hard to accept the sudden change in Kirihara's personality. At the moment, Lu Xu was eating and judging the seven bentos in front of him as if no one was around. He behaved like the leader of those gangs next door. Was it a dream? Yet, the transition seemed perfectly normal, though no one could explain why. The only thing that could be sure was that Kirihara Yusuk was a real fighter. The seven boys were totally defenseless before him despite their reasonable fighting abilities. Of course, Lu Xu was no ordinary student either. Others were scared of him even in his previous schools. As he ate, Lu Xu began the scolding session, In the past, I couldn't be bothered to make a fuss with you. 
but who are you to think that you are good enough to bully your classmates? Plus, I'm not the only victim. You go around pulling girls' ponytails and the straps behind their back. What if you break their straps? Huh? What can they do? You are no longer kids. But you. He did not stop until more than half an hour later. The seven boys' legs had already started to go numb from prolonged squatting but Lu Xu was still reluctant to let them go. When the lessons were about to start, Lu Xu finally concluded by saying, All right. That's all for today. In order to show your sincere guilt for causing other students harm, everyone tell me a sad story. Noguchi Yuki? What was it with the final show? From Noguchi Yuki's Distress, plus 666. From. Stunned, Chiba's table partner could not remove her eyes from Lu Shu. She said, so cool. Karihara actually fought back today. But why did he remain silent in the past? Why did he bear those insults when he was strong enough to stand up for himself? In fact, Yusuk had been scarred by his stringent upbringing under his father. All he knew was repeated and endless practice day after day. At the same time, he hated and was afraid of conflicts. It was a conflicting mentality though, as he was frightened of confrontations in which he could have won with his own abilities. Thus, when strife found its way to him, he committed suicide under the immense pressure. Not all practitioners were mentally strong. Now, everyone began to look at Yusuk in a different light, one of astonishment with a tinge of respect. Chiba watched Lu Xu in silence as he casually picked from the seven bentos. Suddenly a smile parted her lips. It was an early day but Lu Xu decided not to loiter any longer in school. He had no interest in co-curricular activities as he still felt slightly uncomfortable in this foreign environment. When he reached the school gate, a group of girls entered the campus. Instead of being dressed in Baika High School uniform, a line of prints that read a Shioj Girls High School was visible under their collars. Lu Xu's eyes absently raked the pairs of fair legs underneath their skirts. Suddenly the foremost pair stopped. They were so straight. Excuse me, said a melodious voice. Then, Lu Xu looked up to meet the eyes of a short-haired girl. Her face was lovely, like that of an anime girl. There was also a sense of crispness around her due to her short hair. Lu Xu pointed at himself. Me? The girl smiled. Yes. Nice to meet you. I am Sakurai Yeko from Shioj Girls High School. May I invite you to watch my match? A hubbub was immediately stirred up in the crowd behind. Sokurai Yeko had long since been a celebrity in the region, not only because of her excellent swordplay, but also her charming appearance. Countless boys had fallen for her pretty face. But now, this girl was extending an invitation to a boy all of a sudden. Isn't that Kirihara? Kirihara Yusuk the coward? Why did Sakurai Yeko choose him out of so many? I don't believe he is her type. Maybe it's just out of courtesy. Don't think too much. Lu Xu took a long while to recover from the shock. Then, having heard the discussions, he asked, Why me? There was no information about the girl as far as he knew. Thus, she was neither a conservative nor a jingoist. Nonetheless, her class C energy waves could not evade Lu Xu's eyes. Lu Xu was alerted at once, though his expressions remained as per usual. Smiling warmly, Sakurai Yeko cocked her head. I don't know why, but I feel a sense of familiarity upon seeing you. Can you feel it? Actually, it was a simple psychological trick. Be it out of courtesy or for her beauty, so long as the other person replied, I feel the same too, or anything around that line, he would feel a stronger connection to her subconsciously. Many excellent salespersons like to apply psychological tricks in their business. Yet, as a matter of fact, they were not that magical, but simply important. It was an art of communication and mental guidance. This time, Yeko had come with a mission, which was to approach Lu Xu at all costs. 
She was her master's secret weapon that had been hidden all along, independent from both the conservatives and the jingoists. Thus, she had to be used at the most crucial point. Other boys around were on the brink of eruption due to jealousy. Their goddess, Sakurai Yeko, had just confessed to an ordinary boy in their school and it was a love at first sight. Unbelievable. How lucky was this Kurihara Yusuk? After some consideration, Lu Xu mumbled, but I only feel familiar with one thing. Surprised by his response, Sakurai Yeko asked, What is it? Money. From Sakurai Yeko's distress, plus 666. From. From. Chapter 475, Invitation and Rejection. Lu Xu's response to Sakurai Yeko's covert confession went contrary to people's expectations. The onlookers burst into an uproar and many boys were exasperated at Lu Xu's failure to seize the opportunity. But Lu Xu did not care. He knew that this Sakurai Yeko did not come with good intentions, given her disguise as an ordinary student despite her class C abilities. Thus, from Lu Xu's point of view, most likely she had come for Kirihara Yusuk. Besides the conservatives, there were many others coveting the Kirihara's complete inherited trade, even including the jingoists. Skills like this would never become a burden and could always act as the medium to unlock other powers. However, Lu Xu had not inherited their trade. The last person of the Kirihara family had already been dead by the time he arrived. Fortunately, though, all students at the dojo had been dismissed after the death of Yusuk's parents. Otherwise, what to teach his students would have become another addition to his worry list. Although lessons were over, most students chose to stay in school for co-curricular activities out of their own interests. Now, the sword play club room was surrounded by throngs of people anticipating the match with Shioj Girls High School. But Lu Xu was not interested in that. All he wanted to do now was return to his bike a dojo, practice his sword skills, and sing, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, at night, to the full content of his heart. Hence, Lu Xu walked away without hesitation, thinking whether he had to pay Tanaguchi Bundai's salaries with his own money since the Kiriharas did not leave behind any inheritance. Life was so tough. But others could not understand. How could he leave like this? That's so impolite. In any case, their school team is our guest and it won't hurt to accept the invitation. I know, right? What a disgrace on our Baika High School. Their remarks were impertinent because Kirihara Yusuk was famous for being bullied. Yet, Lu Xu decided not to waste his time on them. He only hoped that they would not freak out when he caused some trouble in the collection of gods. Suddenly a person whispered to the crowd, just now Kirihara beat seven guys up in the class. And he. The listener froze. Seriously? I thought everyone can bully him. His temperament seems to have changed a lot after his parents' death. Amidst the gossip, Sakurai Yeko eyed Lu Shu's receding figure. As expected, he had changed, though it remained to be seen whether it was a boon or a bane for the conservatives. At this moment, Chiba suddenly caught up to Lu Xu and walked out of the school together with him. Kirihara-kin, shall we go home together? Lu Xu looked at Chiba, his head tilted. Her short skirt was swaying in the cold breeze, revealing a pair of pretty, fair-skinned legs. Aren't you going to watch the sword play match? Lu Xu asked curiously. Chiba turned her head, her smile beaming with joy. I just changed my mind. After all, none of us has cultivation aptitude so it won't make a difference no matter how hard we try. True. Certainly Lu Xu knew the importance of aptitude, which was directly related to the efficiency of cultivation for practitioners. Tomorrow is weekend. Let's go watch a movie together, Kiri Harikin, Chiba suggested suddenly. Lu Xu was shocked. But soon, he replied, I can't. I have other things on. Then, their conversation plunged into silence. After a few crossings, Chiba turned, smiling. Kiri Harikin, I need to turn here. Then, see you next week. Okay, Lu Xu nodded. 
see you next week. Chiba's uniform was a good fit to her slender body with some adjustments at her waist, which made her waistline even slimmer. Looking down, her black socks looked just nice on her fair legs. Suddenly she turned again, smiles blossoming on her lips. I'm really glad that Kira Hurricane has become stronger. I wish you all the best. Before Lu Xu could gather his words, Chiba had walked away. Honestly speaking, Lu Xu still found it difficult to make peace with his new identity. Chiba was the second girl who had taken the initiative to show her kindness to Lu Xu. The first was Coral. But she and Coral were fundamentally different, because the latter liked Lu Xu, while the former liked Kirihara Yusuk, not he himself. Thus, it was a burden to him, instead of something that he should be happy about. How heartbroken she must be if she knew that her Kirihara had committed suicide under pressure, instead of getting stronger as she said. Boys' hormones and sweat, together with girls' whispers and quiet admirations. They were probably the most beautiful things, like rainbows, in youth and those school days. Once Lu Xu entered the dojo, he saw Tanaguchi Bundai boiling water with a black iron teapot in the yard. There was an air of ceremonial beauty around her. Upon his return, Bundai immediately rose and bowed. Welcome home. Was your bento stolen today? So she knows that Yusuk has always been bullied, Lu Xu realized. Then, he grinned. Nope. But I took theirs. Truth be told, the bento you made was the best. Bundai froze on the spot. Had he really given up in maintaining his supposed persona? Thus, she asked carefully, is it really fine like this? Yes, of course, Lu Xu was not bothered at all. I'm cooking tonight. Chinese food. It must have been a long time since the last time you ate hometown food. Yes. I do miss the taste of our hometown food. Thank you and sorry for the trouble. Great. I'll go buy some ingredients, Lu Xu said. He wanted to check out the vicinity as well. As soon as he left his house, he saw a furtive figure at his door, pretending to be making a call. Ha! <laughs> Isn't this Matsuura Harekuro, a man mentioned in Bundai's information bundle? Actually, Lu Xu did not even know who he had kicked the night before. Lu Xu shot him a glimpse and continued walking. He did not want anything to do with the conservatives. After all, it would be easier to act alone as compared to collaborating with those remaining conservative forces, which would certainly become an easy target for the jingoists. Can't you just take a rest with the pathetic number of members left? Matsuura Harekuro became anxious at the sight of Lu Shu because the kick had been really painful. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens